Hello again everyone, welcome back to my workshop for another of my Jetty Radio videos. This time I'm going to present a wonderful Lua application developed by Dave McQueenie and me which allows you to adjust each point of a multi-point elevator trim curve primarily to compensate for crow brakes, which is also called butterfly but can be used for another proportional control, such as some people prefer flaps on a proportional knob rather than a switch, or maybe you have pop-up air brakes that cause a non-linear pitching effect that you want to tune out with the elevator. The app lets you adjust each individual point of the elevator trim curve while you're flying the model without taking your eyes off the model and without taking your fingers off the sticks. All that you have to do is fly the model and the app does the work for you. Here in Britain we tend to call it crow break, but many countries and jetty call it butterfly, so you might hear me use either name just interchangeably. In this video I'm going to show you how to get the app for your jetty, how to set it up and give you some tips about how to use it. All my flight testing was done with a DS24, but we have installed it on a DS16 Generation 1 with the, the black and white screen, and it worked. And the app reports that its use of resources is within the limit allowed by the older 16. So to the best of our knowledge, you can use this app with the older 14 and 16 Generation 1 transmitters with the plain LCD screen. We have enabled language support in this app. So although it's written in English, it will be able to work with the language selected in your transmitter if we can do the translations. Initially, we've created a translation into German. So if German is the language on your transmitter, the menus should come up in German rather than English. But if you see that any of the words we've got are wrong because we got them from Google Translate, do let us know and we'll put it right. If you would like to see the menus uh, in your other language that Jetty supports, please let us know what the correct words are, because Google Translate can come up with some rather strange ones. And if we get the information, we'll be able to update the files and issue them at some point in future so that everything comes across in the language on your transmitter rather than just English. Let's take a look at the app in action to see how amazing it is. I've set it up here on a dummy model. P4 is my crow brake, P2 is my elevator. The app uses the elevator stick to adjust the trim curve, similar to how Jetty's auto trim works. So of course Dave has called it auto crow. In this demonstration I've turned down the speaker volume, but you will hear later in the training that you get both an audio warning that the auto crow adjuster is switched on and a spoken prompt telling you which point you have reached if you have not yet adjusted that point of the curve. It goes silent as you pass any point that's been adjusted. We need to be able to switch auto crow on and off. So I switch it on when I want the elevator to adjust the curve. Here's a graphical representation of it. Each red circle is a point we can adjust, and it will turn blue when we have made an adjustment. If I start to open the crow break, you'll see a very small square, a small box, shows the position of the crow break along the curve. The large box that jumps shows the point that will be adjusted. The app selects the point that is nearest to the position of the crow break. So you do not have to get the brake right on the point. The app will always choose the nearest one. With the crow closed, the app has selected the first point, which we call point zero, and it cannot be moved. You can only move the remaining points, which we've called points one to six. Now, if I move the elevator because the model is pitching, nose up or down as I open the brake, the selected point is actually moved by the elevator stick. And as I keep opening the brake or nudging the elevator stick to make the model fly as I want, the app adjusts the curve. You'll see that the app moves all the further unadjusted points to the same level. So you don't have to start adjusting each new point from zero. I can move along a bit further and do this. And I come here and do this. 
The display also shows the trim value at each point. And the actual value on the curve where your brake lever is. So that's the point value which will jump from point to point. And there's the actual value where the little box is on the curve. As you can see, the adjusted points have turned from red to blue. Let's have a look at what that does to the elevator servo. So let's have a little look, close the crow brake. So number three is my elevator servo. And now I'll just open the crow brake. As you can see, it's adjusting the elevator trim up and down following the curve. Okay, that took a few seconds to demonstrate setting the curve. In flight, it takes longer as you need a bit of time to let the model settle and tune each point. And of course, it'll burn off a lot of height because you have the brakes open. But with an electric thermal or like the Multiplex Colaris that I used for testing the app, it can be set reasonably well in one fly past and set to perfection in as little as two fly pasts on a maiden flight using the motor to regain height between the fly pasts. With a slope solder, you get plenty of opportunity to set it before landing. I've made about 50 flights to test the app. Resetting that curve back to zero each time and having to create it all over again every flight. And it is truly wonderful. Now, when you open and close the crow brakes, the model remains rock steady instead of pitching all over the place. You could set up the multipoint curve manually in the Jetty Butterfly menu. But you can only make an adjustment after landing and it will take many, many flights to get it set just right. This app lets you do it very quickly, usually in one flight. In many cases, you could do it on the maiden flight, so it is already set before you make your first landing. This all came about because two people, quite separately, sent me a message asking if I could get a jetty transmitter to do the same as something they'd seen on Mike Shellim's website, where he shows a Lua app for those systems that use OpenTX firmware, such as the FR Sky Tyrannis. Take a look at Mike's site, rc-soar.com, particularly the blog for the 25th of February 2019, the Crow Aware Adaptive Elevator Trim. So here we are. There's Mike's website, rc-soar.com, and choose his blog. And have a look at this one and that describes what he's doing it's a wonderful idea in this when he wants to set up the compensation curve the trim button stops changing the elevator trim and a lua app then lets him use the elevator trim button to change the position of a point on the elevator trim compensation curve and the point that's being adjusted by the trim button is chosen by the app to be the point nearest to where the crow lever is as it moves along the curve. Although I initially replied back to these people saying no, it cannot be done because OpenTX is so much more powerful than Jetty's software, I soon re realised that of course we can remove the link between the trim buttons and elevator as we wish by simply making it flight mode separate and clearing out the elevator function from trim during a crow flight mode. So the next step is the Lua app, and I got in touch with Dave McQueenie, who's written some superb Lua apps, and I explained the request and pointed him to Mike Shellim's website. This has caused Dave a lot of work, because Jetty does not allow Lua to get as deep and have as much control as OpenTX allows Lua to have. So Dave has had to do a lot of thinking around obstacles to get this to work. We started just trying to replicate exactly what Mike Shellem's app does. But once we got going, the ideas were flowing from Dave and myself. The end result not only does what was requested, but I think we've developed Mike Shellem's inspiration further forward with new ideas incorporated into it. And I think you're going to love it. But before we go on, a word of warning. Most Lua apps that you can find deal with displays of telemetry data. They do not affect the flight controls of the model. This is a rare app 
that affects a flight control by as much as half of the elevator travel. It is your decision if you want to let a third-party app influence your elevator. Once it is set, you can transfer the values to the built-in butterfly elevator adjustment menu and remove the app in that model if you feel safer doing that. Also, please pay attention to this video and do not rush off trying to do it by yourself once you've installed the app. Remember, this app can drive the elevator trim to half of the elevator's total travel, and it is capable of doing so extremely quickly. So if you misuse the app or the user settings, you could create a lot of trouble for yourself. I've made dozens of flights testing the app and trying its different settings, and I've not encountered any software problems or problems in using it. So, get yourself a nice Italian espresso and a chocolate biscuit to fire up your brain, and let's get going. If you already have some elevator compensation set in the butterfly menu, or a break to elevator mix, it will be best if you disable it so that it and the app are not trying to mix together. Dave is now able to make his Lua apps available through Jetty Studio, but you need to add that option into Studio. So, open Jetty Studio. Go to File. Where's my little cursor? There we are. There's the mouse. File. Configuration. Come along here and choose the Apps Sources tab. And then type in this line here. We can highlight it more easily. There we are. So HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.jettymodel.nl forward slash DFMHC forward slash APPS dot json j s o n and then say okay i really must thank sandor cruz of digitech netherlands for letting dave use his facilities to allow dave's apps to appear in studio now when you connect your transmitter and let the transmitter wizard open I'll just pause for a moment because the file manager will pop up. Get rid of that. Select the Lua app manager. We can get rid of this strobing. No. And now when you scroll down there near the bottom are the DFM, Dave McQueenie apps. So you select the DFM Crow Lua <clears throat> and press the install button. You'll notice that there are some others there, the switch, glide ratio and what. I've already done a video a while ago about the switch app. Um, so if you have a look for my video entitled Short Press, Long Press, Episode 2, that'll describe that. The glide ratio and the what app are fairly uh, self-explanatory but I'll publish short videos about them soon anyway. Now, as with any Lua app, once it's installed on the transmitter, you have to add it into each model in where you want to use it. Go to Applications, User Applications, press the plus button, and choose DFM Crow. The general method of this app is that it creates a control curve within the app and we then create a free mixer from the app to the elevator. The app has been proportionally limited to 50% of travel so that it behaves like a trim rather than a control which has 100% of travel. And this at least limits its ability to ruin your day if you misuse the app. Now, go back to main menu, model, Functions Assignment, create a new function, and give it a suitable name. You could call it Crow App, 
um, crow mixer, whatever. Uh, just for shortness, I'm going to call it ACV, and you'll see why in a moment. Say OK. Come across here to the control. Now the control is going to come from the Lua app. So press plus and scroll down to user applications. And there it is, adaptive crow value. Select that. Say OK. That is a control curve created by the app. Next, back to main menu and into free mixes. I'm going to create a new mixer from, I called it ACV, but you may have called it your other name, whatever function uh, you called it, to the elevator. Come down here. You can just, if you want, go straight to giving it a master value of plus 100% and then just leave it running, no switch. Um, your other options are you can use a lower percentage. Now, bear in mind the app is set up so that it behaves like a jetty trim. It can drive the servo as much as half of its total travel value. This is your option here if you want to reduce that even further. If you want it to be only able to drive the servo to a quarter of its total travel value, then you'd put a master value here of, say, 50%. I've done everything on 100% using the potential 50% travel of the app. Obviously, if you use less than 100%, it's going to soften the whole response of the trimming uh, and then you might find you want to use a bit faster values, perhaps, to get the trim to work. But this is a way, if you want, of limiting just how far the app can drive the trims. And I, I've always done it without a switch, but you might want a final panic switch. Uh, now, this is separate to the crow on-off switch within the app, uh, which we'll see in a minute, which... Um, allows you to switch on and off the elevator trimming the, the Crow app. By switching off the mixer, the app just wouldn't be able to affect the elevator at all. So if you want, come in here, choose your value. Let's see, I've run everything at 100%. You may want to use a bit less. And then if you want, choose a switch. That's a way of just switching off the app's ability to affect the elevator trim during Crow break. Okay, so I'll go for the moment for the 100%. No switch, so I'm okay with that. Now, if you want, you can put a visual representation on your home screen from timers, display telemetry, press the plus, go into Lua and the Crow Mix curve. There's nothing to select in these boxes. Say OK to that. Come back here. And there is the representation of the curve. You do not have to display this curve if you do not want to. It has no effect on the app. However, it is extremely useful to be able to see what the app is doing when you practice using the app and when you have used it for real. OK, let's have a look at the user settings. Go to Applications into the Adaptive Crow Mixer to see the settings menu. The first thing is to tell it what you are using as a Crow control. For example, it may be P4 or it may be a side slider such as P6. Choose your control in the normal way by moving it like this. Select that, move it, but it needs to be proportional. If we've chosen this, we'll get an error message. Six. See, please set crow control to proportional. So go in here and press proportional until you see that screen. Say OK. Now we're not getting the error message. Do not reverse it when you're in there. Don't use the reverse button. Even if you had to reverse it for your real crow control, because this is about the app, not the actual crow control. Now, in the app, choose if you need to reverse it for the purposes of the app. How do you know if it needs reversing? Put the crow, 
control to the closed end of its travel. So crow brakes are off and slowly start to open the brakes. I'll turn the volume up a, bit, a little bit now so you can hear it. If the transmitter speaks out rising numbers, one, two, three, etc., then it's the correct way around. If it speaks out descending numbers, such as six, five, four, then it's the wrong way around and use the reverse crow control option here. So, my stick is in the brakes are closed. I'll start opening crow brakes. Five, four, three. Okay, so I need to reverse it because it's descending numbers. Put Two, it back up there one. now. Now I'll start hoping the crow again. One, two, three, two, one. Good. Now we select an auto crow on off switch. The reason you need this is that we don't want it to be changing the curve when you open the brakes to land and are operating the elevator, for instance, to flare for a soft landing. So we need to tell the app when to take notice of the elevator and when not to. So once again, in the usual way, I'll select a two position switch. Okay to that. Now there is an audio warning built into this so that it annoys you into switching it off. This is important because after setting the curve, you would probably forget to switch it off. So when you come into land and open the brakes, the app would become active and start trying to trim to every elevator movement that you make. This audio warning ensures that you disable the auto crow after you've done your setting. It's also a handy reminder to switch it on when you do want to set the curve. There was one flight test I made when I could not understand why the app did not seem to be working as I kept nudging the elevator and the trim did not respond. And then I realised mm, it's all rather quiet and I should be hearing the auto crow warning. Oops, switch on the auto crow. Next, tell it which stick is your elevator control. And again, you have to make it proportional or else you will get the warning. If we say OK to that, get a warning, please set it to proportional. Go in, press propo, there we are. Now that is everything ready to go if you're happy to accept the default values that we arrived at after lots of flight testing. But let's take a look at them. Go into Crow settings. Now, for the moment, use the default values or softer values for your first flight with the app. After you've got real flying experience of the app, do let us know in the comments below if you find the default settings about right or too fast or too slow. You can choose the number of points in your curve from five up to nine. We've chosen seven as a default. I found that seven works nicely. More points gets a bit much to deal with. Fewer points might work for you, but then the, the trim curve becomes a bit less smoothed. The first point, which we call zero, cannot be adjusted, so you get to adjust one less point than the number you've chosen. So if you choose a seven pointer, you'll be adjusting six points. The point spacing can be linear, which means equally spaced points, or logarithmic, which means they're closer together at the closed end of break and more spaced apart at the open end of break. When we started uh, doing all this, I told Dave to only have logarithmic spacing as it seemed like a great idea in the workshop. But when I did flight testing, it was not helpful. So we tried linear or equally spaced and it's easier to use, but you might feel differently. So we've left the option in there for you to uh, try. So if we have a look at what that does, there now you can see at the closed end of break the points are much much One, closer together. Two, three, four, five, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. What does rate do? Well, the speed at which the point is moved up or down by the elevator is dependent on how far you have moved the stick. If you move the elevator stick a little bit and the speed the point is moved is slow. If you move the stick a longer way and the speed the point moves is faster. The maximum speed that the point can move is set by the rate. Any value you like from 10 
to 1,000. I've tried flying it at big numbers and at small numbers, and we've set the default at 300 because that suited me in test flying, a compromise between it not being too twitchy and not taking too long either to adjust the point. You might like a faster or slower maximum speed. While you're practicing at home with the app, why not change it to 10 and then change it to 1000 and watch the curve on the home screen and see how fast it moves. Be wary of setting too high a speed or you could very, very quickly find you've driven the elevator servo to half its maximum travel value and get yourself into trouble. What does Expo do? This sets how far you have to move the elevator stick in order to reach the maximum rate. You can choose Linear, Negative Expo, or Positive Expo. This works a bit like Expo that you're used to. With Negative Expo, you have to move the stick less to get to the maximum rate. With Positive Expo, you have to move the stick more to get to the maximum rate. So Positive Expo softens the response of how the point moves when you move the elevator. Negative Expo sharpens the response of how the point moves. Announce unset trim points can be switched off. This is the feature where the transmitter is speaking the number of the point that you have reached in opening the brake. But it only announces points that you have not yet adjusted. Once a point is adjusted, it stops announcing. I have found it useful when flying the model and trying to set the curve, but you do have the option here to switch it off. Reset mix curve. Just press it. That's all you have to do. And it will have set the entire curve back to straight line zero. Great for practicing. Right. Using the app. As I've already stressed a few times, this app affects your elevator control. So I strongly recommend that you play with it at home and get used to operating it before you try it for real. I strongly recommend that for your first real experience of it in flight that you don't change the default rate and expo settings to be more sensitive than they are because you can end up changing the model's elevator trim frighteningly quickly. If you feel by practicing at home before you've actually tried it for real in flight that you would like a smaller rate or positive expo, that is safe to do. When you're ready to try it for real, make sure that you have plenty of height and time. Do not for a moment think that you can set this in the few seconds you have on a real landing approach. There is not nearly enough time or height, and you're too busy dealing with other things. Also, the last thing you need is a rapidly changing elevator trim whilst you are low down and trying to land. So do not be in a rush. Fly well out in front of you so you can see the pitching of the model. Do not do it so close to being overhead that you cannot easily see every fine change in the pitch angle. Also, do not get your attention fixated on setting the auto crow and then realise too late that you are dangerously low. That can happen very easily. You may not get all points set before you run out of height on the first fly past, so don't push your luck. Just climb back up and continue where you left off. Before you start, set in your mind a minimum height that you will not go below and keep aware of it while you're setting the auto crow. So, slowly open the crow until the app announces one. Auto crow. One. And auto then crow. start moving the elevator to keep the model auto crow. in the attitude that you want. Auto crow. Uh, auto crow. The trim will quickly move there and move your auto crow. crow brake until the app says two. Two. Auto crow. Then adjust your elevator auto as crow. required. Move the crow brake until the app auto says crow. three. Three. And so on. Auto crow. Four. Auto crow. Five. Auto crow. Six. Auto crow. Auto crow. Switch auto crow off. Now the app has been set to be quite quick at moving the trim points to catch where you are, where you're holding the stick. And you can also make small adjustments to a point by simply nudging the stick, just like Jetty Auto Trim. If you feel that you've got it set, gain some height and try the brakes again. And if the trim needs adjusting, switch on Auto Trim again and use the elevator stick to make any fine adjustments that are required. 
do bear in mind that the trim is, uh, that is needed is different for different speeds. So if you set a perfect curve at low speed, it will not be perfect at high speed, but it will be a lot better than nothing. So do your auto crow adjustments at the speed that you would normally open the brakes. Now, we need to make the curve that you've set survive any future update of the program. So the app creates a separate file for each model in which it's been installed. And the data for the curve that you've set for that model is held in that separate file. So let's have a look in Applications, File Browser, Into the Card, Apps, and DFM Crow. Here you can see the files for each model that's using Auto Crow. Now, when you switch on the radio or select a model that's using the app, the app looks at the name of the model you have selected and then sees if it has a file in here with a matching name. Therefore, if you make any change to the name of your model, the app will not find a matching curve file and it'll create a new file because it thinks it's a new model and expect you to have to set the curve all over again. But the solution is easy. Just connect your transmitter to a PC, go to the file manager and rename the relevant file so that the model part of the name matches the new name you've given to the model in the transmitter. Then when the app goes looking for a file whose name matches the model you've selected, it'll find it again. And there will be the curve that you previously set. Now, finally, some of you may be nervous about leaving a Lua app running all the time if it can have an effect on your elevator. Well, that's fine. If you want to, then you can transfer this curve to the butterfly menu and disable, or in fact, just remove the Auto Crow app. Just take the numbers shown on the curve, divide them by two, and write those results to the elevator adjustment curve in the butterfly menu. But you may need to do more than just divide by two. Remember when we set up the mixer, I said that I've always run it at 100%, but you might want to choose a lower value, in which case you'll have to multiply again by that percentage. So uh, you got to divide the value shown by two, because that's what the app will do and then multiply again by the value in your mixer. So if your mixer was 100%, that's fine. You don't have to do any further. If your mixer was set at 50%, then you need to multiply the value by half again. Uh, if your mixer was set at 75%, you'd have to multiply by three quarters. So you end up reducing the uh, value a bit further. So for example, let's just set this curve a bit wildly to show it and thus prove it. Auto Pro. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is write down the numbers for each of the points that we're able to adjust. And I start moving the crow control, we can see that it's point 100. Oh, sorry, it's point one is 100 plus 100. The next point is minus 100. The next one is plus 100. The next one is minus 100 again. That one is 31. And the last point, 66. OK, so now we divide those by two. Why? Because these are trim numbers. And in Jetty, a trim number is worth only half that in control travel. But the butterfly elevator adjustment menu is a control, not a trim. For example, 40 in trim is worth 20% of travel. So that half value is what we will write into the butterfly menu. We can cross-check it by writing down the numbers reached by the elevator travel. We have a look in here. Where's our elevator? It's number three. 
So as I move this control, it should go not to plus 100, but to plus 50, then minus 50, then plus 50, then minus 50, then half of 31, which we'll call 16, uh, could be 15, could be 16, it's not really going to matter. We'll call it 15 breezier. And then the final one was 66, so half of that will be 33. So let's start moving the elevator and see if it goes plus 50, there we go, minus 50, it's heading off down there, heading back up to plus 50, minus 50 again. Now it should go up to plus 15, around about there, and then finally up to plus 33. Oh, there we go, lovely. Now it's important just to keep a check on that. Uh, to see that that's what your elevator is doing, because we'll prove it again once we've written it to the butterfly menu. So now <clears throat> we go to butterfly, elevator, and set the curve value that we need. Set that to 100%. The curve type will be to match the one that we have in the app which we've chosen a seven point. And then we set each point at those half values that we get from the uh, Crowbreak app. So that first point was uh, plus 50, then minus 50, plus 50, it's already there, minus 50, Then it was plus 15, and finally on to plus 33. Next, you need to stop the Auto Crow app, otherwise both it and the butterfly menu will be adding to each other. The simplest way is to go to Applications, User Apps, select your Adaptive Crow Mixer and simply delete it. Say yes. Done. See, it's cleared out there because it doesn't understand what that is anymore. Now, go back to Servo Monitor <clears throat> and confirm that the Elevator Servo is actually going to the same values that it did with the Auto Crow. <clears throat> okay. Number three is my Elevator. So as I move the crow break, we should go to plus 50, minus 50, plus 50, minus 50, then it'll pass plus 15 all on its way to plus 33, and there we are. So we've successfully transferred it to the built-in elevator adjustment menu and removed the Lua app if you feel that you need to. Well, as I said, I've made a great many test flights of this app, and I think it's superb. I hope you find it is a big help to you as well. After you've used it for a real in-flight, do let us know in the comments below how you got on, and how you feel about the default sensitivity governed by the rate in the Expo. Have fun with that, folks.